And we are live. Welcome, guys, to CAD Live. I think this is episode 84, so we are cracking through these shows. And we are a little bit early today. Uh, this was billed for uh, 5 p.m. UK time, which is 12 EST. We're actually going live a little bit earlier than the uh, advertised time. So apologies for that. But on the plus side, this is our normal time, right, Jack? Yes, this is the normal time. So I guess we kind of ended up, you know, we are kind of ended up where we were all meant to be, which is which is a very, very happy ending. <laughs> we're all where God intended us. Absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. I was listening to a podcast actually before. I just went for a run and I was listening to a podcast about 5D and about, a Q, you know, QAnon, and, but, but QAnon and as regards 5D consciousness, which is what Stebbins always banging on about. Really, really interesting stuff. I mean, it's so wacky. But um, it was an interesting insight into uh, into all of that stuff. Well, I mm, I, I kind of the the whole the whole Q and on thing. It's like, guys, don't you have anything better to do? Like, mm, what, what's mm. going on? And the whole five D theory. I never really got into that much. I always no. kind of. I I'm I'm more of a. I'm more of a four D man. Well, that too, of course. But it's I prefer. Of... I, I like to keep it two D, personally. I like to. <laughs> if I go into, if I even go into three D, I like to put rein myself in and go back to two D. You know, just keep it simple, right? Just plain old simple eight bit Nintendo. Mm, Nothing mm. wrong with that. Exactly. No, I'm kind of like. This is my reality. This is where I live in. I want to focus on that. I want to focus on my own life and improving it and things like that. And then I read those Q and on things, and I'm like, you're either all multi millionaires. Who, with just loads of time. With loads of time, or you're all losers. It's, <laughs> yes. it's either one. Like, what else is there? Like, how can you focus on things like that when you don't have a normal life going on? Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's, I mean, me. It's, that's me. You know, we've all got to have hobbies, right? So, you know, I guess these guys, what, what can you do? If they're into it, they're into it, which is fine. Um, so, look, we are, of course, back to discuss The Art of Seduction by Mr. Robert Green, And we've got a fun pack show for you today because we're going to be talking about the art of insinuation. And then we're going to be talking about entering their spirit. And then, assuming we've got time, um, we're going to be talking about uh, temptation and uh, creating temptation so we've got some good stuff coming up in the show today i read through these chapters again this morning did you did you enjoy these chapters jack you do you think there's some good stuff in here that we can chew on well i enjoyed the whole book i mean the whole book is full of gems so yeah of course i enjoyed mm. these as well I mean, absolutely absolutely so look we've got plenty to look forward to in the next hour or so so listen guys first off do hit subscribe to this channel do hit the notifications bell do give us a comment below give us a like give us a thumbs down whatever you want to do it's fine and do subscribe to jack's channel as well jack do you want to put your uh details yeah. in the uh in the chat just so guys have got it and also as well stick your questions in the chat if you've got anything that you want to ask whack it in the chat and we will come to it there's a little bit of a technical issue this side in terms of the way our streaming platform is working so i'm not sure i'm going to be able to make the comments come up on screen that time but um we will nevertheless get to them and we'll answer them. So, so whack your comments and questions in the chat and uh, yeah, we'll crack on with it. So, and also I should just say, if you're watching this on replay, thank you very much as well and welcome. It was a good show yesterday, wasn't it? Having with Ryan in when we were chatting about the Dread stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dread is a very misinterpreted thing mm, mm. and it's, it's always nice to get those things back to basics and yes out of mis misinterpretation because a lot of people always they turn it up to 11 if yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. yeah like yeah being red pill aware and all that isn't about being captain red pill and uh keeping bitch in check all the time there's there's nuance to all of this there's nuance of but a lot of people tend to forget that and then you get like lms and uh, coach greg adams and things like that who just red meat all over and mm, i guess mm. it sells but mm, mm. indeed yeah. indeed it does but anyway we continue to uh to work our way through the art of seduction which is by the way the greatest most intelligent book about seduction certainly that i've ever read and i've read a few of them and i would highly recommend it everybody watching this to go and grab your copy if you haven't already here's my copy i know jack's got a fancy 
Half yeah, back I version. Know. I can um, grab it. Hold on. I'll grab it. Mm-hmm. He's going to grab it. Um, so, yeah. So, what we're going to be talking about today is chapter six, which is called Master the Art of Insinuation. And this is an important one because he says at some point during this chapter that you can't be a successful seducer without mastering this stuff. You can't be successful in terms of getting the girls, as it were, until you master the art of insinuation. So it's really, really, really key. Um, And this is something that we do in contemporary, you know, game or dating or whatever you want to call it as well. And, um, you know, I always... As we're going through this book, what I'm trying to do is to look at the material, which is interesting in its own right, and then take a step back and say, okay, so can this actually help us? If we're at the Cancun phone party, or if we're you know, doing X, Y, and Z, can this stuff actually help us? Or is it a little bit outmoded, or does it, does it really apply in the TikTok era? And uh, most of it does, most of it does, interestingly, but um, obviously we're looking at it through that lens. Jack, did you want to show your 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 gorgeous treasures off? Oh yeah, the gorgeous hardcover mm. of the art of seduction. I mean, I was very lucky to get my hands on this. Mm. So, if mm. you know about the book, Robert Greene always has these side stories with them. In this yes. book, they're all purple. Mm. Like all, oh, nice! All all the details are completely purple. He has a complete purple section on the seducer types so everything is differentiated I, you can't see it right now i guess but everything is differentiated in this book he separates the chapters with highlighted purple pages it's just a very fancy version of it and indeed Indeed. I'm very, very jealous of that book. And I might have to come over to the Netherlands and, and steal it and steal it from you because it looks <laughs> it looks my security. Come mm-hmm. over and get it. Exactly. It looks fantastic. But anyway, listen, let's get into the art of insinuation. So I'll read the introduction. He says, making your targets feel dissatisfied and in need of your attention is essential. But if you're too obvious, they will see through you and grow defensive. There is no known defense, however, against insinuation. The art of planting ideas in people's minds by dropping elusive hints that take root days later, even appearing to them as their own ideas. Insinuation is the supreme means of influencing people. Create a sub-language. Bold statements followed by retraction and apology, ambiguous comments, banal talk combined with alluring glances. Um, That enters the target's unconscious to convey your real meaning. Make everything suggestive. So I think, I mean, what's your first impression of this? Because for me, I think this is really flirtation 101, isn't it? It actually just is. It just is flirtation 101. And Mm. by the life of me, I can't think of an example right now. But I mean, so you're talking to a girl and... Mm. Really? God, (laughs) who does that? I, I know, right? Like you come out of your father's attic or your mother's basement, wherever you dwell. Or your or your uncle's middle floor. Oh, yeah, that, that one exists as well. We, you start talking to a girl, and you don't want to be obvious about it. You want to show her you're able to play. It's kind of, it's banterishness. Mm, mm, mm. And instead of being so forcefully blunt about everything. And that's kind of where insinuation comes from. And again, by the life of me, I can't think of an example right now. I'm drawing a blank. It happens well, sometimes at my age, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are getting on a bit. Well, let's let's move through because it will it will come clear to people as we talk a bit more about how he sort of structures this. So he then goes into an anecdote, and this is actually from a, a story called No Tomorrow by uh, well, I'm not sure he's by, but it's it's, it's what he, he describes as a libertine story in the manner of dangerous liaisons and in this fictional story he describes somebody called madame de t and how she seduces a young man in in this story and basically what she does is she makes it all seem like it was his idea so she gets him to cut i think she's married she gets this this dude this young chad to come to her place when her husband's away 
she sort of says, oh, there's this wonderful bedroom um, out the back. You know, you must see it next time. And he's obviously intrigued and he's attracted to her, but he is uncertain. You know, is she hitting on me? Is she not hitting on me? He doesn't really kind of know, but he goes along with it. And it describes it quite cleverly because she makes it feel like this, the fact that they, they get together and they have sex that it was his idea that he was the pursuer, but actually mm. it was her all along. Now, again, bringing this into the, for, from a male perspective and bring this into the TikTok era, is that really, <laughs> I'm trying to think how this would apply. Um, and I'm not sure. I, I think the, the difficulty with anything that gets too complicated in seduction is that I always just think, ah, TLDR, you know, girls these days, you, you've got to just be quick. It's got to be quick. It's got to be like, blah, blah, blah. But do you think that there's anything that th this sort of approach could apply? Maybe more social circle game. Yes and no. Even if you approach a girl, like the, the thing that comes to mind, like, yeah, just come over and watch a movie. Oh, watch a movie. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. What, what else did you have in mind? I wouldn't dare do anything else. It's a good movie, by the way. It won a couple of Academy Awards. You should really watch it together. Oh, yeah. Kind of, you divert from the obvious. Well, that's interesting, actually, because what you're talking about really is plausible deniability in that's the sense true. that you are. And this, I think, is where insinuation is important, actually, because what you're not going to do is say, do you want to come over and bang? I mean, you could, you know, you could say that. And in some instances, maybe it would work. But in general, that's not going to fly. That's not going to play very well, no. you know. So you. In, so what you're doing is insinuating because obviously, and Tom Torero talked about this actually. He used to say, you know, sh she knows that you know that she knows, and it, it's that sort of thing, isn't it? That of course you both know. You're not just talking about a movie. You're not just talking about. It's not. A, I'll come back to my place and I'll show you my dog videos. Well, it's not just about the dog videos, is it? Well, you you kind of both know that. But it has to be insinuated rather than directly stated. Because if you directly state it, it kind of kills the mood. It just kills the whole thing, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, again, it shows you can play. It shows you're socially capable, mm. Mm. so to say. And these these small things like, oh, um, I, I, I used this once. What was it? Like mentioning your preferences in clothing, even sort of say, and then all of a sudden she shows up in the color you absolutely enjoy. Mm, mm. Kind of like you drop the hint of that black clothing is one of your preferences, and all of a sudden she shows up in black clothing. Like, oh, good, you got the hint. Like insinuating yeah. those small certain things. Yes, yes, and you're dropping in those hints. The Symbol for this one, interestingly, is the seed. Uh, not seed like that in the uh, <laughs> in the Ernst Graf sense, but just the seed. It's this idea of the seed. Uh, so you're dropping in these little seeds, these little seeds of suggestiveness, which is which is what you need to do. And I think actually, the more as we talk about it, I start to see actually this is very opposite for modern day seduction as well. Because as I say, in most cases, you're not going in there and and saying, hey you look cute, you want to bang, because that would just get you blown out. So we all have to use this to a degree, right? Even if you're Robert Green. Oh, sorry, not Robert Green. Uh, Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again, Mode 1 is one of the most misinterpreted books out there. Mm. Really is. Maybe we hey, should do a breakdown of that at some point. That would be cool. That would be really cool if we could do that. Because mm, it's mm. so misinterpreted. Like, Adam Roller, uh, sorry, Alan Roger Curry is direct, but he's not blunt, mm, if you mm. know what I mean. Like, yeah. he is direct with the whole, I find you very attractive. This is what I want to do. And some guys interpret that as, oh, he just walks up to a girl and he asks her if they want to bang. That's yeah. not really how that works. Yes. But, okay. Well, it, it would definitely be good to do a bit of a deep dive into that um, at some other time, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. There's a really interesting paragraph on page 215. So students, if you're following along with the book, uh, open to page 215. But he says, particularly in the early phases, and this is, this is key, particularly in the early phases of a seduction, 
Learn to make everything you say and do a kind of insinuation. Well, this is what I've been banging on about for ages, really. Or it's related to what I've been banging on about for ages, which is that the, in the early phases, you don't give too much away. In the early phases, you, you're, you're not an open book. And for a start, that means you're not saying, do you want to bang? But secondly, it, it just more generally, you have to hold a little bit back. You're keeping your cards closer to your chest. But then he goes on to say, insinuate doubt with comments here and there about other people in the victim's life, making the victim feel vulnerable. So maybe you're sort of like, oh, you know, you're kind of cute, but I'll tell you what, your sister, she's, uh, you know, she looks, she's looking good. <laughs> so, so something like that. Um, slight physical content insinuates desire. Okay. Touch, you know, touch on the lower arm, touch on the shoulder, just those little things, emphasizing a point. Shaking hands, holding the handshake for a little bit longer than necessary. All of those things. It insinuates desire, but it doesn't verbalize it. That's a good one, by the way. Mm. I used to do that. Like, give a girl a high five and just hold it there and see what she does. Oh, and, mate, then, all of, and, and then all of a sudden you're holding hands. I'm like, okay, good. Did you Let's see that infield? One. I think I maybe I showed it on your show, that infield of the uh, Polish girl where I do that. And then we're both – and then we're holding hands. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed very, that very... one too. No, I did it once as well. I don't know. I was drinking a Coke with a girl. And all of a sudden she said something. I'm like, hey, high five. And as soon as I did that, I'm like, hold on. I'm going to keep it there. See what she does. Like, is she into physical contact? And yes. well, it worked out. Exactly. Exactly. No, great stuff. Um, And then it says, where are we going now? Slight physical contact. As does a fleeting or memorable look, an unusually warm tone of voice for the briefest of moments. A passing comment suggests something about the victim that interests you, but keep it subtle. Your words revealing a possibility, creating a doubt. Your planting seeds that will take root in the weeks to come. Again, we talk about weeks to come. That's maybe not quite what we'd recommend here because, you know, ideally you want to be moving things forward more quickly than that. But nevertheless... When you're not there, your targets will fantasize about the ideas you've stirred up and brood upon the brood, uh, brood upon the doubts. They are slowly being led into your web, unaware that, that you are in control. How can they resist or become defensive if they can't see what's happening? But I mean, what I particularly like about that is the fact that he emphasizes in the beginning, in the early phases of the interaction. And secondly, he he talks about he talks about touch um, because I think touch is, is very, very important uh, mm -hmm. early on. Because you're already insinuating the physical. But exactly not, but not too much but it is there like why is he touching me like and then she'll allow it and then you know and then it's kind of like can i go further blah 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 blah, blah. Mm. and mm. It, well, it all starts from there it does you want to break down the barrier of physical intimacy early on in a very small way listen we're not talking about anything creepy we're not talking about being, you know any sort of like grabbing or, or or anything like that of course you know this is what this is well within the bounds of what is socially normal and socially acceptable but you know touch is very powerful mm -hmm. and it works because it insinuates what is to come and it breaks down that barrier between the two people oh yeah it absolutely does i mean it's strange times that you have to explain it like that these days like, humans are social animals we yes. respond very positively to touch from people we feel comfortable with. We do. And this also as well, this goes between guys as well. You know, you meet somebody, you shake hands, you tap, slap them on the back or whatever. Like it, even that as well, that will, if you're not comfortable with the with that physicality around other people, then you're going to come across as being somewhat distanced and maybe not actually gain people's trust. Well, that's the thing, especially the handshake. Like, I'm a handshake guy. Like, when I meet someone, when I thank someone, I want to shake their hand. Yeah. It's common cur uh, courtesy. Mm. So I sold one of my ships a while back, and the guy came in. He had gloves on. He had a mask on. It was completely packed in because of the whole thing going mm. on. Mm. And... Well, I gave him the item, he gave me the money, and I wanted to shake his hand. I said, well, good deal. Yes. We, like, man of our words, I help, I help myself to my word, you help yourself to your word, let's mm. shake on it. And he's like, oh, better do it like this. And I was just physically repulsed by it. Like, what kind of a weak well, man are you? 
Well, of course. I mean, the whole uh, current situation is is obviously killing physical intimacy or phys not physical intimacy, but physical touch between people and many other things about how we interact. Because, of course, people have made the comment about masks. I mean, personally, I, I, I'm not massively bothered about masks either way. I quite like the bandanas. I'm, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, make, I don't make a big thing about it like some people do. But people have made the point that masks are really taking away our humanity and you know like like how do we relate to people well we smile we look at people we we have these facial expressions and things and of course you've got a bloody great mask in the way you can't see all of that stuff so there is a there is a point there right yeah but, just in terms of how we relate hmm, but even the common decency nowadays it's just well the elbow bump the elbow yeah, bump and, I, 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 by god man like do you let your wife be fucked by somebody else like that was the first <laughs> thing that came to mind. Like, oh, you're one of those guys. Okay. Well, it's the elbow bump. It's the elbow bump. Like, it's like a sort of Mason's handshake. You know, it's the secret. It's the secret uh, handshake. Like, of hey, the you can, of the you can have my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, when, when somebody goes in, when somebody goes in with the elbow bump, you know that his wife is fair game. So remember that. You yeah. heard that here first. Um, but yeah, so dropping hints, etc. And then there's this line. He says, no seducer, no persuader can hope to succeed without mastering the language and the art of insinuation, which is a pretty powerful statement, really. So this is, you know, this is important stuff. He then talks about vagueness. And he says, you've got to get their imaginations running. You've got to get their fantasies going. And this kind of thing you can do in the early stages, maybe when you're just texting backwards and forwards before you've maybe met up for that first or second date, exactly. you can get the imagination going. You, I mean, and, and, and look, you, you can go quite sexual in those sorts of conversations if you want to. And, and that's good as well, because that hopefully gets her, you know, kind of turned on and into the idea Moist. of you guys. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, um, but uh, but there is something to be said for leaving a little to the imagination, for holding back a little bit as well, isn't there? Because you want you don't want it to to, to get so exciting that it's like, oh my god, um, you know, she climaxes and then she thinks, well, I don't need to go and see him now. You know, mm -hmm. you, you you want to hold a little bit back. You want to tease a little bit. Absolutely. And I just thought of a great example. You know who are we better at insinuating than we are? women and mm. what i mean by that women can do it non-verbally and they're very good at it with their clothing like the mm. just a little bit of extra cleavage yeah just a little bit more skin be mm. it the legs or whatever just a little too short of a skirt you know, yes when yes. she comes over i've had that i've had dates with girls who we um I agreed to come to their place and they were wearing something and no, they weren't asking for it. They were insinuating. I know, I know. But with their clothing, they were already insinuating that it wasn't just for coffee. Mm, mm. And I know I'm going to get people riled up with this, but girls tend to dress for the occasion. And I've noticed well, that they do that with a little bit more extra skin, sort of a little bit too short of a skirt, and a little bit more cleavage, mm. things like that. Mm. It's insinuating. It's not being direct. Again, she's not asking for it. We know. But there's an insinuation going on, like, hey. Mm. Mm. Because they know. They know men are, like, vi uh, physical. Well, yeah, no, you're right, and he visual. Sorry, and he visual. talks in he talks in here about that. Actually, he talks about like oh, a, a, a glimpse of the shoulder. They used to talk about a glimpse of the ankle in Victorian England. You know, it's those little things. It's not overt, but it's just it's just a little bit. I mean, obviously, it's a bit more overt now in the the age of Instagram and all the rest of it. But it, it's those little hints, isn't it, of sexuality? Guys mm -hmm. can't really do that as much, I don't think, with clothing. I mean, I like to keep the old, you know. Unbutton the old shirt a little bit, but I, I don't think it's quite as obvious with with guys. You've got to do it in a different way, I think. But eye it's contact. Been, Sorry, carry on. With guys, I've heard that women tend to focus on the arms a lot, like mm. the uh, the lower arms and just the arm in general. They tend to have some weird attraction to that. Mm. Mm. So show off your thing. arms. Show off your mm. arms, guys. Um, but. 
it then talks about eye contact. And of course, eye contact is very important in this uh, in this context. And he talks about Lord Byron, who had this famous underlook. Uh, it says, while everyone was discussing some interesting subject, he would seem to hang his head. But then a young woman, the target, would see him glancing upward at her, his head still tilted. So it's kind of like, or something like that, you know, um, which 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 works. Th what he's talking about here, this does work. It was a look that seemed dangerous, challenging, but also ambiguous. Many women were hooked by it. Now, I think what he's talking about here is you could be having a conversation with a woman that is completely normal, completely innocent. You're talking about, oh, should we get, you know, this place does really great coffee or oh, have you noticed how that shop over there always has sales on or blah, 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 whatever it is. But what's being communicated through the eye contact is, is very different. It's very sexual. It's very erotic. OK, and that's another example of insinuation, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Because then you're insinuating the date. Like you're insinuating you want to spend time with her. Insinuation doesn't always have to be sexual. It can be indeed what we just mentioned for spending just time together as well. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So so looks very important. And in fact, there's a great quote here from Stendhal who says, glances are the heavy artillery of the flirt. Everything can be conveyed in a look. Uh, yet that look can always be denied for it cannot be quoted word for word. So looks, again, have plausible deniability, right? Mm. Oh, I remember yeah. doing this, like, I remember doing this, like, this This can work very well if you're, say, meeting a girl in a coffee shop and she's working there, she's a barista. I remember a girl that I ended up having a, a, a fling with and she was a very pretty Italian girl. She's working this coffee shop I used to go in every day. Now, because of the nature of the shop, there was loads of people in the queue, there was loads of baristas behind the, the counter. It was quite a high-pressure sort of environment and also, plus, she was working as well and quite kind of busy but we'd always go in and i would just i really worked on the eye contact so our, our first conversations were completely banal it was like oh do you want chocolate on top or you know is that a large or a medium or you know whatever but, <laughs> completely. <laughs> so no it's it's definitely a large um but i uh, want chocolate on top of that it's it's large and it's hot um <laughs> but i would just we'd be having this very banal conversation about just the coffee and, you know, whatever and how much it was. But I would just be, the eye contact was full on. It's holding that eye contact, that very sexualized eye contact. And and that was enough. That often eye contact in itself, it, it does so much of the work for you. You know, all these lines and things people remember. If you get the eye contact right, you don't need any of that stuff or very little of it. And then in the end, all that happened was I said to her, oh, you know, we keep meeting like this. We should probably, it's a bit rude. We haven't even been out for, to be properly introduced for drinks yet. Um, and she said, oh yeah, ha, ha, and then giggled. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll tell you what, write down your number on the receipts and give it to me. And then, you know, we can we can chat. And, um, and so she did. And the conversation between us had been minimal and mainly about how I like my cappuccinos. But the subtext, which was insinuated through the eye contact was powerful. No, I know what you mean. Like, you, it's kind of like, don't give me that look, is what I used to hear a lot from girls. Yeah. Like, don't yeah, give yeah. me that look. I'm like, what look? Like, you know what you're doing. Me? I don't know. No idea. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> like, I, I know I'm winning when she calls me a bastard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's like, okay, now we're heading in the right direction. Like, you damn well know, you fucking bastard, how, you, how you're looking at me. Like, exactly. Don't do that. Like what? I don't know. Mm, and then mm. things so, happen. <laughs> so much can be communicated through the eyes, much more than verbally. Much more than verbally. Mm -hmm. So then there's a couple of other points. He kind of says, make a game out of it. It's it's. There's got to be this element of cat and mouse about these things because it's fun and it's a bit sexy. Don't be too obvious. You know, just whatever you do, you've got to act with a little bit of finesse. You know, as I say, it's not about. Even if you're walking up and saying, hey, I saw you, you're cute. Well, okay, that's one line. But beyond that, you, you've got to bring a little bit of finesse into it, a little bit of game playing, a little bit of, you know, there's got to be something there, that little bit of friction, you know? Um, and 
saying things like, oh, you're incredibly beautiful. I just think you're so good looking. You're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's that's not going to win you any favors. I mean, you can, mm. you can pay lip service to it at the beginning. But after that, it's got to be sort of implied. It's just the way that you're interacting with her. Mm -hmm. It's playing with her. Like, hey, you're kind of cute. Well, we mm. might go out for coffee one day. Who knows? Might exactly. consider it. And then, I what do you mean, might consider it? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then... Um, for the reversal of this, because he always talks about the potential downsides, he just says, look, if you're, you know, if you're too subtle, then she's she's not going to know what's happening. So, uh, you, you know, and, and also he talks about Casanova and he says that when Casanova realized he was dealing with a woman who was just clearly very interested in him, he would just cut to the chase. And that's and that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, listen, if you're at the Cancun phone party <laughs> and, you know, you're 12, you're, you're, you're six shots in. And you've got the girl next to you and she's, you know, tonguing you down and sort of making uh, making signs to go back to her hotel room, then you don't need to do much insinuation. You know, you've got to you, at that point, you need to be taking the action. OK, this is more for a more conventional sort of situation where maybe it's going to be one, two dates or something like that. You know, you've got to be just a little bit mysterious about it. And girls, girls also don't like it. Girls generally as well. They don't like it when you cut to the chase too quickly. They like the build up. They like the anticipation. Mm -hmm. The chase is better than the catch in many cases. Well, not in my case, Jack, but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Okay. Anything else to add on that one? Not really. Not really. It's it's playful banter. Exactly. Le you you're you know how to build it up. You know how to not to be obvious and play with it a bit. Like you mm. both know mm. what you want, but you just circle around it in a playful way. And it's kind of like who will bite first? Who will state the obvious first? Exactly. 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 Uh, and it's a bit of a game, actually, to see because really you don't want to be the first one to state the obvious. You know, you mm -hmm. want to keep that game going. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's it's all good fun. It's all good fun as well. And so. then you can call her her a pervert, which is pretty mm. fun. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So look, should we move on to enter their spirit? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, enter their spirit. Right, this is what he says in the introduction. Most people are locked in their own worlds, particularly now, uh, making them stubborn and hard to persuade. The way to lure them out of their shell and set up your seduction is to enter their spirit, play by their rules, enjoy what they enjoy, adapt yourself to their moods. In doing so, you will stoke um, their deep-rooted narcissism and lower their defenses. Hypnotized by the mirror image you present, they will open up, becoming vulnerable to your subtle influence. Soon you can shift the dynamic. Once you've entered their spirit, you can make them enter yours at a point when it is too late to turn back. Indulge your uh, targets every mood and when giving them nothing to react against or resist. So my first thought on looking at this section again was mirroring. And actually the symbol is the hunter's mirror. So that's this is what he's kind of talking about. He's kind of talking about, okay, so observe them and then take on elements of whatever drives them. So that there's a sort of a, say, a similarity between the two of you and you connect via that. Now, this is fair enough, but on the surface, I would have some concerns about this because, A, you don't want to be the chode who's sort of like, oh, my God, you like tennis. I like tennis, too. Um, oh, my God. How's you your like, backhand? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, you like flower arranging? I like flower arranging as well. Let's go to a flower arranging event together. I mean, you don't want to do that. and there's a danger going down that route. You're going to friend zone yourself. And you you also don't want to be too agreeable, do you? No. You, know, you, you, you actually want, in many cases, to create polarity. So she says, oh, I like uh, rap music. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? I hate rap music. What are you talking about? You know, mm -hmm. I like classical music. Or she says, I like classical music. I'm like, what is, you're an idiot. I like rap music. What are you talking about? Are you one of those boring girls who doesn't know it how to have fun? Exactly, exactly. So I, I'm not sure because I, you, you see what I'm saying here. I, th I think you do want to. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. It's kind of like, uh, and we discussed this before, people love to talk about themselves. So instead of going all the way with them and agreeing with them, you could let them talk about themselves more. Let's say she comes up to you and she's like, oh, I like tennis. And you go like, well, I've never actually been that much into tennis. Tell me more about it. 
be yes. interested in it, but don't copy it too much. Reflect their interests back on them in a way that they can talk more about it. And that's where you're triggering that narcissism. Like, oh, I can talk about myself. Well, I can talk about myself all day because I'm grand and I'm lovely and I'm amazing and I love tennis. And this guy wants me to tell him about tennis, which I absolutely love. And then all of a sudden, that was such a great guy. I don't know why, but he's so nice. Well, probably because he let you talk about yourself the whole bloody time. So so in a way, we could summarize this whole section in a very in the very simple way. We talked about this before, didn't we? When you're we doing did. when you're doing day game, you know, you've got to have some interest in her when you're on the date. You've got to have some interest in in her, and mm -hmm. you've got to create some sort of common ground. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it's just as simple as that, in a sense. It actually is. And go back to Dale Carnegie's "How to Win Friends and Influence People." Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Some of the examples he uses here. I mean, he talks about uh, President Sukuro of Indonesia and how this journalist, or how he seduced not sexually but how he seduced this journalist uh, cindy adams because he wanted her to write a favorable uh biography of him or well it was an autobiography that she that she, is such a great story he played that yeah. so well and he talks she talks sorry uh green tells us how securo basically lures her in and there's one point in the story where she's dyed her hair this kind of blue color. And he goes, oh, my God, that blue color is so great. That looks really amazing. What, what color was it? And she tells him. And then he goes and dyes his hair with the same blue dye. Mm -hmm. um, but And it works because she feels favorably towards him. And then when the book comes out, the book is actually politically where he wanted it to be. It you know, shows him in a very good light. So it works. But... I wouldn't advise. You see, my issue with this chapter is that I remember back when I was a teenager and I genuinely thought that the way to get into a girl's good books or to, to get her to like you would be to seem similar to her. And I remember this is a kind of embarrassing to relate, but I remember a girl that I was at college with and I used to, you know, she'd wear a, like a green T-shirt and jeans. And I, I actually ended up buying a green T-shirt and, you know, almost dressing like her, which is kind of creepy now you come to, 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 to say it. But we've but all I, been there. But I, but I had this idea that the more I'm like her, that's going to make her well disposed towards me. And then later I realized, actually, no, it's the opposite. You've got to have polarity because masculine, feminine, they're two separate things. You mm -hmm. want to, if anything, you want to widen that polarity if mm -hmm. you can. Well, you just explained the entirety of why QAnon doesn't work. In <laughs> really? All, well, in all honesty, yeah, because like the whole, um, and I've been talking to a friend about this, but you just hit on it. Like the whole, there's an evil plan to overthrow humanity and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, I, and I saw that Bill Gates article and I was like, no, he is trying to, and I need to phrase this right. He's trying to apply to the feminine. He mm. wants to be in the good books of the feminine. Like, look at me being a good little boy for you. I do all the things you like. Because what do men want? Sex. How do men think they get sex? By being in the good books of women. They think they get there by doing things women like to do. Because if I do things she likes to do, she'll probably like me. And that's how we got into this entire mess that we're in right now of safety over freedom. Mm. Because men think they can get sex by doing what women like. Well, that's an interesting theory. I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, I think, yeah, sure, sure. Safety has definitely been prioritized, of course, in this whole thing. And um, but it's interesting that you you couch it in those terms as, a, as appealing to the feminine. You, I mean, that's you might be right. I, yeah, um, because interesting... everything in life is about sex. Like the wars have been fought for poon. Like everything we do, we're going to Mars because Elon wants poon. I mean, that at the end of the day, that is the major motivator to everything that we do absolutely but because Indeed. we've been because of the whole uh t mostly female teachers and blah 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 and men are being taught that if you want a girl to like you you have to do the things she likes and that's why you get that over feminine society and blah 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 it's not because of chemicals in the water or turning the frogs gay or whatever it's just 
women think that they like men who do things they like, but women don't know what they want. And that's hmm. why you have the manosphere who found guys who found out like, hey, polarity is the one thing that women like. And then some guys just go too far and think there's an evil cabal, while actually it's just very simple to explain. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We kind of drifted off. Sorry about that. No, not at all, not at all, man. I mean, it's it's a we're living in a crazy world in crazy times, but um, we can probably kind of move on from this section quite soon because I think we've kind of gone through it. But he there's a there's an interesting part where he says even more than entering the spirit of the person as they are now, what you really need to do is enter their spirit as they were when they were young, in the sense that, you know, when she was, if she, you know, say she's a woman in her thirties or something, when she was young, maybe she thought, well, I'm going to have these exciting adventures. I'm going to have these dreams. It's going to be this crazy kind of thing. And you want to be looking at that. You want to be looking at that elemental side of them and then bringing that out of them. Um, so say she's, you know, she's, she's 30 and she works in an office and blah, blah, blah. It's not really like entering that spirit. It's entering the spirit of excitement and wonder and adventure and exhilaration. Right. What, what do you want it to become where you were a kid mm. and go mm. from there? Talk to the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a pirate. Well, you, you you kind of succeeded, really. I was always fascinated with pirates when I was a, a kid, actually. Mm. It's just so, amazing, like living free, not listening to anybody, drink exactly. and a bit and things like that. Do whatever it, you want. Exactly, exactly. But this idea about appealing to the childish side, this comes up time and again in the book, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It came up in the seducers victim section where mm -hmm. you know you think about well what did they want what sort of life did they want before and if they're lacking that then how you come in and supply you know and often as i said it's adventure and it's excitement mm -hmm. um carry on because a lot of people forego their dreams for stability for a day job and it gets to people like that's why the whole midlife crisis is sort of a thing where guys tend to find out that they have been living below their potential and it gets to them. But with women sort of say, like I am of the opinion that a lot of women and science would agree with me on this one later on find out, Hey, I didn't actually want this NBA and doctorate or whatever. Mm. I just wanted to have a couple of kids, a dog and, uh, a husband who'd uh, come home and tell me I look pretty. But then, well, most of them were told, like, no, you need a good, stable job. You need this amount of income. You need this Prada bag if you want to mean something to people. Yes. And uh, they later on find out, oh, that was not the case. And when you ask somebody about that, again, the question, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Yes. And then they get back to that. And they get back to dreaming about that. Maybe something they haven't thought about in years. And all of a sudden it's like, yeah, whatever happened to that? I wanted yeah. to do that with my life. And now mm. I'm here. Yes, he says somewhere, I it may be in this section or not, but he says somewhere, if you if you observe the person and you see the childish elements of their character, that's the tip of the iceberg. Re you know, and Really, they want to go much, much further than this. And he does warn us several times that you, you shouldn't be taken in by people's exterior. You know, she might now be a scientist and work in a lab and she's got a very serious job and everything else. But that's not who she really is. That's just the surface appeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like what's going on behind the mask? So to yes. say. And, and Green mentions that in, I think that's 48 Laws of Power. Is that 48 Laws, or is that Art of Seduction where I mentioned that everybody is always wearing a mask? Mm. And mm. it is your goal to peel behind it, to know yes. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I saw, uh, I, I, I'm, apologies, guys, because I can't actually see the comments for some reason in the streaming software today, which is why I'm not putting any comments up. But I saw, I think it was the boss legend or somebody who said, this is great. This is like watching. This is like an English class. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are the boss legend. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. Good comment. Um, right. Okay. So then the reversal. He just says, you know, 
just don't go too far with this or the victim could become repulsed. And he tells a story about the poet Rilke and this, this Salome girl who sounds like a right goer. I mean, she banged Rilke. She, she had it. She, she was having it off with Nietzsche and also Freud. I mean, you know, it's a pretty impressive sexual resume, but anyway, apparently Rilke, um, got really on board with Russian culture because she was Russian or for, had a Russian heritage. And he filled the house where they were staying in Berlin, actually, with um, all Russian artifacts and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it, it just went too far for her. Like, at first, she liked it because he bought into her background. But then it was a bit like, hang on a minute, this is a bit weird. And she ended up dumping him. So so don't take it too far. Don't become, like, you know, don't become too similar because no, that's no, no, just no. going to create create repulsion. Like, it's something girls tend to do with guys as well. Like, all of a sudden, you listen to Norwegian death metal, and all of a sudden, she is listening to Norwegian death metal, and you're like, where did this came from? It mm. is always, it is also a good indicator to know when she's cheating. What when if she all stops of a, listening to Nor Norwegian death metal? Well, when all of a sudden, she finds a new interest that you've never heard about. Like, mm. that should get some alarm bells ringing. Like, where, where did you get this from? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, there's this guy at my work. I don't, never mind. I know enough. I know mm, enough. Like, mm, this is the Okay. End. Indeed. Indeed. Well, look, let's go into Create Temptation now, because then we'll have done three sections in the in the show, which is pretty cool. If you've got still got a little bit of time. Mm, Want to save it for the, for the next one? We could dive a bit deeper into it then. We could leave the viewers tempted. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we did. We just we just threw it out there. We threw it out there. Are we going to cover temptation? No, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to do. It. We're going to do it next week. We might do it next week, or maybe not. You're just going to have to wait and see. Who knows? Maybe this is the last time I'll ever be here. Maybe I'm dumping my channel. Who knows? Maybe I'll finally convert to Christianity again. Find a nice trad wife who's 32, has three kids. Who knows? Well, you, you, need, you need to work on you need to work on the beard a bit, but, um, but oh, yeah. No. Well, oh, that hurt, man. That hurt me personally. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm well, you know. Yeah, my beard grey skills are not same boat on that one. It's like my beard grey skills are are not sufficient uh, to be a member of this this space, really. So um, I'll probably have to retire at some point. But uh, but yeah, if you want, we can leave. Um, we can leave temptation till next time because it is a very it is a very good section. Um, of course, he's got the Oscar Wilde quote: "The only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it." So that's a little bit of a spoiler for next time. But uh, cool. All right. So listen, what have you got coming up, Jack? Or where can guys find you? What have I got coming up? I've got after this, I've got a membership live stream coming up, which was actually supposed to be before this, but we had a reschedule, so it's okay. Uh, go to my channel, which is in the chat right now, and you can become a member there. I call it the uh, grocery fund, just for uh, shits and giggles. <laughs> but uh, we, I've got a lot of exclusive content over there. On the main channel, though, I have my uh, main podcast, which is called Red Evening. It's with Rob Says from Masculine Geek. And we just go through life after the red pill. It's not necessarily focused on all the red pill maxims. It's more like two guys of different uh, age categories who just go through normal life with the knowledge that we have. So it's yeah. about dating, finance, work-related things, you name it. And you can find it all there on the channel. And if you like my voice, and if you've heard my voice before I got the uh, metal works in, I did two audiobooks which you can purchase right here in the link. It is the Gender Nomics written by Carl from Black Label Logic. Both books now in audio available on Gumroad. And uh, that's about it. Fantastic. Happy days. Okay, so from my point of view, just hit subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit subscribe. Plenty of people who watch these videos and they, they're not even subscribed to the channel. So, you know, come on. Well, you have those too. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, you know, you want to be appraised when this high quality content is going out. So hit subscribe to the channel because sometimes we have to change the times around a little bit. I mean, I like to do these at 11.30 a.m. EST, which is 4.30 in the UK. But, you know, things come up and sometimes you have to shift the time slightly. So if you're subscribed, then obviously you'll be the first to know as and when we're going to go live or I'm going to put up a new video. So do that. Hit the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Give us a like. Give us a dislike. Whatever you want to do. Put some comments below. Take the mickey out of Jack's hair or my hair or our lack of beards. 
you know, it all helps. It all helps. Whatever you want to do, it all helps. Um, it's like a Manosphere bingo card. Like, lack of beer. You're more to the PUA side. We'll have well, you funnily enough, funnily, funnily, funnily enough that you should say that, because I was listening to uh, the, a podcast, not a Manosphere podcast, but a podcast of a sort of a right-wing thinker, a British right-wing thinker who will remain nameless. Um, but I quite like his... I, I, I mean, I, I don't agree with everything he says, but I quite like some of his stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and he was making the point on a recent show, he was saying that actually beard growing is now soy. He was saying he's deliberately clean shaven because, of course, all the hipsters have beards, don't they? Mm. I, I think I know what he means. I know where he's going. Like the beard statement is soy because you see all these weird pencil neck, twiggy arm kind of guys with a giant bushy beard and their lumberjack vest. And you're like... What the hell, man? Like, you can't even punch butter. And you're, you look like that. So I, I know what, he's, what he means. But you're not fully convinced. I'm not fully convinced. I'm not fully we should, convinced. Maybe that could be, we, should, we could do a show on that, or we could do a rule zero on that. You know, beards, soy or not soy, you know. I, mean, I think Red Scooper is going to have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 possibly, possibly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly argue with him either about it, to be honest. Um, no, so, uh, he's a pretty big guy where I'm like, yeah, you know what, I'm not going to do this. No, no. <laughs> but George Bruno, though. Oh, yeah, come on, man. I used to like his stuff so much where I was like, oh, you know what? Like, when I have my morning coffee, I just watch a video from Bruno where I'm like, oh, you know what, this is – he, he brings it nicely, but now I'm like, my God, man, you're such a spurg. Like, uh, well, I mean, he just he just went down. I, I never really watched his stuff before, but he just went down a very uh, uninspiring um, uh, rabbit hole, unfortunately. Um, mm. But uh, I'm watching a lot of Tusk at the moment. Guys, watch James Tusk's channel. He's got some great stuff. Um, yeah, same here. Same over here. in Brazil at the moment. Seems to be having a great time. Um, that didn't sound envious at all. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this space, guys. Watch this space. Um, I should be getting Tusk back on, actually. I'm just trying to sort it out with him now, but hopefully we're going to have Tusk on uh, next week to talk about uh, Brazil and what he's up to and so on. So look out for that. Uh, yeah, anyway, guys, enough chat. Uh, get on my free daily email list. There's a link below. If you want to read more of my stuff about dating, game, the dating marketplace, Renegade Dating Blueprint, my collection of 11 books, there's also a link below to that. It's only $39. So take the opportunity before we have to whack the price up. Um, and that's it, really. We will see you again very soon. I'm probably not going to be on tomorrow because I've got some stuff to do this end. It's actually my birthday. So I might take the day off. Really? Um, or I might come on and do like a, you know, I don't know, like a like a birthday stream. But I think I probably won't be on tomorrow. Uh, but there will be a Rule Zero at the weekend, which I think is going to be on Ryan's channel. And then obviously we'll be back for more fun and games over here uh, next week. We will. So with that, we will say a fond 